Science fiction films have been around almost as long as the medium itself. The earliest film that could really be considered sci-fi in any way is a 50-second short from 1895. It's called The Mechanical Butcher, and the simple premise is that a butcher has a machine that can instantly convert a pig into sausages. However, it's possible the butcher is simply a charlatan, so this film's status as science fiction is dubious. It has been cited as the first sci-fi film in some sources, and it was made by the highly influential French directors, the Lumiere brothers. The next contender for the title of the first science fiction film is Gugus and the Automaton from 1897, supposedly the first film to feature a robot. Like so many silent movies, the film is assumed to be lost as of now, but was directed by cinematic pioneer Georges Méliès. The French filmmaker used groundbreaking special effects to make many of the earliest films with sci-fi themes. In 1898, he came out with Astronomer's Dream, which is probably more fantasy than science fiction, given that the astronomer is dressed like a wizard, and the film features fairies, demons, and mythological figures. It was about three minutes long, whereas most movies in the 1890s were around a minute or even less. Then, in 1902, Melier directed the iconic A Trip to the Moon, which forever changed the way cinema was made. This film is much closer to what one would think of as science fiction today, and is most often described as the first science fiction movie. Exactly like the title says, it's about astronauts taking a trip to the Earth's moon, where they encounter bizarre aliens. The film is also the source of the famous image of the moon with a face getting hit by a spaceship. Sci-fi writer Jules Verne was an obvious influence in the film, as he wrote two books about traveling to the moon. This is definitely the most well-known film from Melier, who also starred in the film, as well as one of the most famous silent films in general. At 13 minutes, it was his longest film yet, and probably his most complex, taking three months to film. It featured groundbreaking effects using double exposure and the substitution splice trick, where the camera cuts and resumes filming once an on-screen element is altered, with the shots being spliced together to give an appearance of a transformation. Many filmmakers would borrow and improve on the techniques used here by Melier. A Trip to the Moon is over the top, but intentionally so, and this is a big part of what makes it so entertaining. Everything is very stylized and theatrical, which isn't surprising as Melier began his career in the theater. Fitting the theatrical style, each scene is played out in a wide shot with a stationary camera. There are no close-ups and no continuity editing, which was standard at the time. Melier wanted to release the film in America, but Thomas Edison's company secretly produced pirated copies of it. When it was shown in the U.S., all the money went to Edison instead of Melier. It was a huge hit, so it probably would have helped Melier stave off his eventual bankruptcy. Despite its popularity, A Trip to the Moon was actually considered lost for many years. Melier was somewhat forgotten until a resurgence of interest in his work in the late 1920s. By 1930, there were two extant copies of the film, but they were both incomplete. It was actually not until 1997 that it was completely reconstructed. There was even a hand-colored print found in 2002. As a film about space travel, it is the first film featuring classic science fiction themes. Therefore, I too consider it to be the first true sci-fi movie. Two years later came another Melier film, The Impossible Voyage, which is similar to A Trip to the Moon in many ways and can be seen as its spiritual successor. However, it was much more ambitious. It was almost twice as long at 20 minutes and cost over 37,000 francs, the equivalent of about $7,500 to make. Like A Trip to the Moon, it was inspired by Jules Verne, based on a play of his called Journey Through the Impossible. The plot involves a group of people touring the world, which they then extend into space with a visit to the sun. Similarly to A Trip to the Moon, everyone is able to walk around on the surface of the sun unharmed. The various modes of travel include car, train, and even dirigible. Also from Melier is Under the Seas, an 18-minute long movie from 1907. Once again, he took inspiration from Jules Verne, parodying the novel 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. The film is set up as a dream of a fisherman named Eves, and features various outlandish sea creatures, including nymphs, mermaids, and giant seahorses. However, it doesn't actually seem to take any plot elements from the book. Instead, Eves travels by submarine and views an underwater ballet. Then, he crashes, stranding himself underwater, and is attacked by the sea creatures. It ends with him waking up from his dream, and he realizes he is simply caught in some nets. Other Melier shorts with sci-fi themes include The Eclipse, with more anthropomorphic celestial bodies, 
and long-distance wireless photography, which predicted a crude form of television. Another key sci-fi director in the early years of cinema was Spanish filmmaker Segundo de Chomón. In 1908, he made a blatant unauthorized ripoff of A Trip to the Moon, barely even changing the title to Excursion to the Moon. It does have a few slight differences, and Chomón shows he can pull off camera tricks just like Melier. Chomón's visual effects prowess continues to be displayed in another 1908 short, Electric Hotel. It depicts a hotel with technology far beyond the tech of the era, where things are taken care of automatically. Luggage unpacks itself, a brush cleans shoes on its own, and a woman's hair is magically combed and braided. The short extensively uses stop-motion animation, and was one of the earliest films to do so. It's not the first to use stop-motion, as some claim, but it used the technique more extensively and effectively than anything that came before. Chomon returned to space travel as subject matter in the 1909 short A Trip to Jupiter. He again uses all sorts of camera tricks and even a tracking shot, something highly unusual at the time. For 1909, A Trip to Jupiter had a large number of shots at over 30, and the cinematography and editing were pretty sophisticated. Again, this film cribs a lot from A Trip to the Moon, and this type of plagiarism was incredibly common in the early silent era. However, A Trip to Jupiter has a lot more differences from Melier's work than Chomon's earlier short. In A Trip to the Moon, a semi-plausible method of space travel is used, but here there's a more fantastical scenario with a ladder, and it all takes place inside a dream. The first British sci-fi filmmaker was Walter R. Booth, who had previously created the first British animated film in 1906, The Hand of the Artist. That same year, he directed the question mark motorist about a magical car driven by a couple who ran over a cop before going into space and riding on the rings of Saturn. Booth's depiction of outer space is clearly inspired by Melier. Booth also made the Airship Destroyer, which came out in 1909 and was also known as the Battle in the Clouds. The 20 minute long film centers on a fictional attack on Britain by a fleet of airships, which was unrealistic in the early 20th century. This makes it the first aerial warfare-themed film. Airships attack an armored car and airplane, destroying both. The ships even drop bombs on a city, decades before this would become reality for Britain in World War II. The airship destroyer was probably inspired by an H.G. Wells novel called The War in the Air, which was published two years prior. These early science fiction films were obviously crude by today's standards, but were brimming with creativity and clever filmmaking techniques, it would inspire filmmakers for decades to come. If you like this video, I'm planning on making a follow-up that covers the science fiction films of the following decade. That'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe.